Are you new to camping and looking to purchase your first new camp stove? Or are you a seasoned overlander that's just looking to replace their current setup? Well, this is the video for you. I have teamed up with three other overlander and YouTube creators to bring information from multiple points of view on four different stove selections. Maybe just one of them will be right for you. Stay tuned. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Matt Fry with Fry's on the Side. We're an adventure-based channel where we love to take our small family and explore the outdoors. We have a Jeep and a teardrop, and we go to some awesome places. So if you'd like to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the fun. So our stove selection is the Selkirk 460 from GSI Outdoors. It's got a really cool orange powder coat color. Frankly, I just like the color. And it's got a nice stainless steel top, and then with two 10,000 BTU burners. So it's plenty of heating power for what we need. So why do we buy this stove? Well, to be honest, our old Coleman stove, similar to this setup, just broke, stopped working. I didn't have time to mess around with it. So I went to the nearest outdoor store and picked this up for about $100 on our way out for another adventure. So what I like about this stove, it's still pretty small and compact and folds down, fits in the back of our teardrop really nicely and in the back of the Jeep if we have to. And the burners are still set pretty far apart and it allows you to put two different size pots on there uh, for all your different cooking needs. All right, so what I don't like about it is the little brass fitting that goes on to put your regulator on. It somehow got pushed back or something and it just is a real pain to get on there. And the other thing I don't really care for is the little push igniter. It frankly, just doesn't work all that often and there's propane fumes everywhere. So I ended up just using like a you know little Bic lighter. Not a big deal, but it's still kind of inconvenient. So in summary, I think this is a good stove and for a good price. And even though I bought it on a whim, I would probably buy it again. All right, enough from me. Let's hear from these other overlanders. Hey there, I'm Will. We're a channel that goes on incredible adventures, finding ways to connect to nature, get out of the barrage of everyday life, and celebrate the beautiful public lands around us. Okay, Jet Boil Genesis. Now, this stove was not a small investment for us. And one of the major reasons that we decided to make the investment is because of the shape. So this shape, the way it's designed, allows us to get two full-size pans or pots cooking at the same time. And that is one of the best, best features of, of the Jetball Genesis. Okay, let's talk functionality. This is where the rubber meets the road for us. So how does this thing actually cook food? So the first thing to mention is the ignition switch. It's a pull lever instead of a push button and it works almost every time. So I've never had a problem starting the stove. So it's just like one or two flicks of that thing and it starts up, so that's good. Now, other than the physical design of this stove, what really sets it apart from the pack is its flame regulators. Here's where it's really different. Those knobs, you have to turn many rotations to get to go to high or low. And that's because the flame regulation is very, very accurate and tied to these knobs. So you can, you can tweak the heat. You can get it just to a simmer. You can cook, like, you can cook things on low. Um, and this is a big, big deal for us. Kate and I tend to skew a little bit more foodie when it comes to cooking uh, food on the trail. And the ability to be able to cook at a low heat is really important. So that has been a major upgrade for us. So I just talked about some of the things that we love about this stove. Now let me mention some of the things that I do not love. So I know I just said I love the knobs and the flame regulator, but I also do not like the knobs. And it's because you have to turn them so many times to get to maximum or back to minimum that it's hard to track where you are. So it takes a lot of practice and getting used to and kind of feel for where you are between minimum and maximum. And I, I think if they just like, if they had just put like a red dot at the end of one, it would be easier to track. So that's a little bit of a gripe that I have about the knobs. So the next thing that I do not like about the jet boil is the price. Why does it have to be so expensive? It's a great stove, but does it have to be so expensive? Okay, so the last thing that I have a gripe about is the windscreen. The windscreen on the jet boil does not match the rest of it. The rest of it is so well built. There's this flimsy little hard to connect plastic windscreen. So I have never been able to actually put it on there correctly and get it to stay in place. And it just seems like a miss to me. Now I know it's a trade-off because the design of the jet boil itself is rounded, which makes it hard to make a windscreen for it. So I get that. But for some people it might be a big trade-off. For us, 
the jet boil Genesis was a great investment. The shape allowing us to get pots and pans on there that are the right size, the flame regulation, the compactness of it that allows us to stow it away in our Jeep really easily, just make it a really great addition to our kitchen for us. There are definite trade-offs and drawbacks and it's expensive, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for everybody, but if you're somebody who really likes to take your cooking seriously, or at least try hard, this could be a really great addition to your setup. If you wanna see more content from us, please hit the subscribe button. We value every single subscriber. So thank you to those who have subscribed. Thank you in advance to those who will subscribe. And until next time, I'm Will from Venture to Rome. We'll see you later. Hey there, Fletcher Mel Things Overlanding here. Thanks to Matt Fry from Fries on the Side for having me be part of this collab. Um, today I'm gonna to be talking about my Coleman Fold and Go stove. Uh, it's very comparable to like the Jet Boil Genesis, but it's like a third of the price of that. Product. So again, I went camping recently. I did a review of this uh, stove. So I'm just going to show you that here and uh, hopefully it's helpful. So as you can see, this is the Coleman Fold and Go stove. Um, the thing that's really cool about it is the form factor. So again, I'll put the dimensions up on screen here, how big this thing is, so you have an idea if you're trying to fit it into like a decked drawer system or something like that. Down here on the side is where your regulator plugs in. And then each one has its own starter built in, which is really nice. So you can just click that and it will start the stove. So you don't need a lighter or anything like that, which I really like. And then on the very front here, you've got your controls for the left one. If you want propane to come out faster, you turn it up more. If you want it to come up faster on the right side, you turn it down more. So they're opposite, so you know which one's which, which is kind of nice. But so let's give this thing a shot. Basically, you turn on your propane. And there we go. So my old Coleman stove, one of my only complaints about it was that the fire control was really difficult to use. It was either, it was like an on-off switch. Just in this little bit of using it, it is definitely way better than the old double burner. Like, you can bring it way down, or you can bring it way up. And again, cleanup is easier, I think, too, because you can just pop these two things off and wipe it out and you're done. Um, you've got so much room. I mean, this is my biggest pot that I've got, and you can see how much room there is between that and the other burner. So tons and tons of room. Super excited about that and uh, can't wait to use it again. So again, thanks to Matt Fry for having me. Um, you know, as you saw, the stove is really awesome. It works extremely well. The fine controls are pretty awesome, too. And for a third of the price of a Jetboil Genesis... I feel like it's kind of a steal. So that's kind of my thought on that stove. And again, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description below to the stove and also to all my channels. So if you're interested in following along or, or coming over and subscribing, I'd love to have you. Um, but again, thanks for watching and thanks to Matt. I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And I've got what has got to be the most overlanding piece of cookware that you could possibly buy. It's the Timbo Tusk Scottle. And this thing is loved and hated by so many people and uh it's it's sad because this really is a great tool to cook on um it's it's a very simple device it's got uh, it's got three legs and then the main disc and this is what makes the scottle so awesome And that's it. You've got uh, three legs for a tripod. You've got a one pound propane tank connector, or you know you can connect a, a five pound or a 10 or a 20 pound propane tank if you want to with an adapter to it. And this is it. This is all there is to it. And it makes a fantastic you know, little cook stove. It creates a very nice hot spot right here in the middle, which is where you do all your cooking. And then the edges stay warm as you go out and so you cook your food you push it out to the edges to keep it warm you can cook more things while this is staying nice and warm and it it works really really well now the downside to it is it is expensive i mean this for for what it is i, I think it's probably a little overpriced but i've got friends that use these and absolutely 
loved them. They cook everything on this. I took it out earlier this week on a trip and cooked on it for the very first time and it worked really well. I can see why people like this thing so much. The downside is, is this, this is all you can do. If you, you know, need to boil water and, you know, have a pan that you need to boil water on, I mean, you could set it on this, but it's not going to work near as well as, you know, your traditional two burner stove. If you want coffee in the morning or that sort of thing, then you're going to need something else. So there's some pros and cons to this, but for those that, uh, for those that cook on this and love it, they really, really love it. And those that bash on it are typically just bashing on it because of the price for, for what it does. It does really well. And if you want to be the ultimate overlander, you have a rooftop tent, you have a scottle and boom. I mean, that makes you an overlander, right? No, not, not really. Uh, that's just a, a long running joke. If you've never cooked on a scottle, if you're just getting into this, this is definitely worth checking out. So that concludes our collaboration video. I hope you enjoyed seeing multiple different uh, perspectives and multiple different setups. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them down below. Let us know what your setup is or any suggestions that we had with some of the stuff that we threw out there. Uh, if you like this style of video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. And uh, I would love to have you part of our channel, so be sure to hit that subscribe. Thanks for watching Fries on the Side, where adventure is served.